About 10 years ago, Mimi Schott's life changed forever. Her daughter died at childbirth, leaving Mimi to care for her granddaughter, Jaslyn, a child with special needs. Uh, my daughter never regained consciousness, and her uh, Jaslyn's father couldn't handle it financially or emotionally. So I took Jaslyn home with me when she was 19 days old, and I've had her ever since. When she was born, I guess the choice would have been to put her in foster care or an institution. At that point, they didn't know really what her prognosis was other than that she was having seizures. They told me she would have cerebral palsy and be retarded. I thought I was going to be visiting on holidays and criticizing her for giving her daughter Kool-Aid instead of milk. I never thought I'd be raising another child, let alone a special needs child and I never thought I'd be doing it alone. When Jasmine was born, I was working full-time as a manager of a cable company. My kids had grown and moved out of my home, and I was looking forward to focusing on my career. I have very little opportunity to work because of Jasmine's needs, so I focus mostly on taking care of her. High five, you can do it. It's a huge job but it's the most rewarding job I've ever had. And I don't really think of it as a job. She's my child now, um, and she's, she's my life as well. For some reason, even with all the drugs she takes, gets up every morning at the crack of dawn between 4.30 and 5.30, no matter what, seven days a week. It's all the things that a nine-year-old little girl is supposed to be able to do by themselves, I have to help her with. She can't eat normally, she can't walk, she can't talk. Uh, so I help her with everything. This is a walking sling, which she likes to dance in. She comes out here and we dance to music and she walks around and, and plays. It just gives her freedom to be able to go where she wants to go rather than being told or put where she's going to go. I've had parents come up to me and thank me for having Jaslyn in school with them because their children see people in wheelchairs now and don't think anything of it, whereas before they were frightened and confused and thought there was something strange about that person. We don't want to be hidden away in her room, isolated from society. We just want to be a part of it. We just have to plan a lot. I've always spoken my mind and uh, I have a stubborn streak. Um, I feel that if Jaslyn's original doctor had been my daughter's advocate, health advocate, they wouldn't have been in this situation. None of this would have happened, but it did. And I don't intend to ever let that kind of situation happen again, that if I see something that needs to be taken care of, I'm going to fight for it. Having the governor cut the wages and taking away my health benefits scares me. It keeps me up at night. I'm older now. Should something happen to me and I lose my health benefits, it's not only Jasmine I have to worry about, it's myself. I, I don't have the kind of money that it takes to even be in a hospital for days at a time or a day it can wipe you out in, with one incident. Jaslyn deserves to be in a home with a family that loves her and putting her in an institution is not even something I can even, even imagine. I mean, I'm going to have her with me until I die. There's no way I'm going to let anything ever happen to her somehow. I'm going to take care of her, and I just have to really hope and pray that they don't do that to people like us, That because we are them. We are everybody, and it could happen to anybody, and saying it, it isn't going to happen to you is just a dream. The fact that she has a seizure disorder and she's G-tube fed and that she needs to be picked up and carried and change, have her diaper change. 
you know, that takes skilled care. How does the governor think he's going to be saving money if he's going to make it impossible for families to take care of their family members? If they can't afford to stay home and take care of them and their family member ends up in an institution, it's going to put a huge debt on society. I can go back to work. I have no problem working. I worked since I was 15 years old. I, w I want to work and earn a living, but I also want Jocelyn to be in a home and have an, a life that she deserves. It's not her fault that she was born disabled. It's not her mom's fault. It just happened. We aren't asking for anything other than to keep what we have now, that we want to be able to take care of our family members and we want to be able to take care of ourselves. And having health benefits is just something that everybody in this country should have. And it's scary and we shouldn't have to worry about losing our health benefits when we have all these other things to worry about. My dream for Jaslyn is to maximize her potential to be the best that she can be, whether that means being able to eat three bites or half a sandwich, or be able to take three steps um, to enjoy a horseback ride, to be healthy, to be seizure free, to be accepted by society. She'll never be a prima ballerina, but I never say never. She's gonna do things that are gonna amaze me. She amazes me all the time. She's doing things now that I never thought she'd be able to do. When uh, she first started going to therapy, they held her in her hand and they just kind of moved her up and down and thought, what are we gonna do? This kid has nothing. She's proven she's got plenty.